Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today on this Thursday, including John Shannon, standing by. Brought to you by the Vancouver Giants, VancouverGiants.com. Uh, yeah. Tell you about Kansas City and the possibility of the NHL going back there. The Kansas City scouts back in the day, yep. great unis. So nice. Red, blue, yellow. Do you remember those at all? I've, I remember watching the Kansas City well, scouts. You're getting mad at me. I'm just ah, I love the Kansas City scouts. Well, they were pretty bad, but anyways. Yeah. And they, they moved after two years. Yeah. Uh, John Shannon, NHL analyst, co-host of the Bob McCallum podcast. He remembers the Kansas City Scouts. He joins us now. <laughs> John, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. In fact, uh, this year, New Jersey in their reverse retros yeah. did a salute to the Scouts in their in their color scheme wow. on those sweaters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a- absolutely. And what we all remember... Simone Nolay and, and Wolf Paymont. Wolf Paymont. Denny Heron. Great yep. scouts of the of, of the past. John, your interest level, because we've been arguing about this the, the, the last hour, your interest level in this National Hockey League Final Four, the conference finals. Well, Ryan's right. I, I have interest because I love the National Hockey League. I, like, I love the Stanley Cup playoffs, but I actually think that, that Ryan and Rick are closer to what we're going to see in our country mm. for the next couple of days. And, and and what's going to happen over the holiday weekend is by the time we get to Tuesday, and remember, we, we're going to go back to having a hockey game every night <clears throat> starting tonight, um, that there, by game three, when the, in the series both move to the other city, people will be back. You know? so, so we're going to see ratings rather disappointing, rather low through the weekend, and then they'll start to spike again as we get into next week and we get closer to finding out who will play for the Stanley Cup. Yeah. As a proud Canadian, uh, John, uh, the four remaining teams, all from the U.S. South, all from non-traditional hockey markets, are you okay with that? Well, I mean, it, listen, we, we we let them into the club. You know, you, you have to pay the consequences. You know, I I look I at I, I look at Paul Maurice. He's Canadian. Rick, mm-hmm. you know, Pete DeBoer's Canadian. Uh, Bruce Cassidy's yeah. Canadian. Rod Brindamore's Canadian. They're still. 40 to 50 percent of the players are Canadian. It's still our game in so many ways. And by the way, it's still our cup. So yeah. it, it, it's I don't have an issue with that. We, you know, that whole Canadian versus American thing yeah. went out in, in my opinion, went out for the most part in 1967 when they expanded to six American cities without even contemplating going to Vancouver or any other place in Canada. Four remaining teams, John. Uh, Crystal Ball, who's your pick? Well, I have studied Vegas uh, closely for the first two rounds. I did I, I did some work in, in both series for radio in yeah. Winnipeg and radio in Edmonton. They are, uh, they are a whirling dervish. They are impressive. They are relentless. Uh, Aiden, Aiden Hill is the backup goalie is actually a better goalie than Laurent Boissois. I know the people on the island don't want to hear that, but mm-hmm. that's the truth. Well, he I guess he's from the island too, isn't he? He's born um, in Comox, yeah. Yeah, um, but, uh, but Aiden Hill was a starter for more of the se- regular season than Boissois was. So if they can solve their goaltending problem, mm-hmm. when you think of their defense with the experience of Petrangelo and Martinez and Theodore and McNabb, all have Stanley Cup rings, when you think of... of you know what what Mark Stone is to that club and how in many ways I think he has taken Jack Eichel under his wing and you can see Eichel playing like a true pro now I, I think Vegas is going to be tough to beat I, I really do John let's talk about what's going on in Arizona your thoughts uh you know they get uh, Tempe the voters shot down the mm-hmm. the new arena what's going to happen here I mean it this it just happens every four or five years it looks like Feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, my gut tells me we're close to the end. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I, I think that in order to try to get a, a, a proper resolution, whether that's new ownership or whether that's relocation, you know, you need a year to a year and a half to do that. So that just fits in with playing one more year at Mullet Arena yep. and then moving on. Uh, but I, I can see us at this time next year talking about the Coyotes being in another city. 
and I and and so or or being owned by Matt Ishbia, who owns the Phoenix right. Suns, and they're going to play downtown for uh, a relatively short period of time before they have to renovate again because they just finished a renovation downtown, renovate again to allow for hockey, or right. they build a brand new arena in Phoenix at some point. But th- those are to me those are the two options: local John, ownership with Ishbia, yep. and then and then move the team. John, why? Why do they get so many chances in Arizona? Uh, other teams have moved. Uh, oh, you know, attendance is down. You, we're going to move you. Why do these guys get so many chances in your eyes? Two things. Uh, it's it's in the top 15 markets in the United States. Yep, yep. So it's a really big market. Yep. You know, and it's it's a market with all four major professional sports. And I think that that's, you know, there is something to be said for that. Um, the other thing is, is that Gary's always been able to find somebody to buy it. Right. So, <laughs> so, so, it, it, as, you know, if you make comparisons to the last team that was relocated, which was Winnipeg, that was after a decade of infighting amongst ownership in Atlanta. And finally, the five owners realized they could not get along. They could not work with each other. And they threw the keys on the table and said, Gary, we're giving this up. We don't want anything to do with this. So you can do with it what you want. Hmm. And he only had one place to send it at that point, and that was Winnipeg. That hasn't been the case. And as as we've seen with Ottawa, yeah. there are plenty of people willing to dip their toe in and say, I might want to buy a hockey team. I might be interested in this. I can make a real estate play out of this. So that's why it's all that's why he's always believed in the in the the Valley of the Sun as a hmm. potential market. What's never happened, guys, I'm sorry for getting on a soapbox here, yeah, but what's okay. never happened in Phoenix is good ownership and a good team. Yeah. Ah, right. You know, that's an amazing combination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big time. You know, you get a you get good ownership and then you get a team that's actually proficient on the ice. I mean, how many times I mean, what was it, 2012? I think the last time they yeah. really made a dent in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Western that's eleven final. years ago. I mean, maybe maybe the fans in Phoenix are actually smarter than we think, and they don't want to go watch bad hockey. Yep. Uh, I know you had Gary Bettman on the Bob McCown podcast what, a, a week yep. and a half ago or so, uh, John, he talked about the Phoenix situation. But uh, of the cities that we bring up as possible destinations, Salt Lake City, Kansas City, uh, Houston, uh, Quebec, is, is there one that you think intrigues or interests Gary more than in, uh, the others? Salt Lake City. I, I really think so. Because, uh, well, there there is an NBA owner there uh, named Ryan Smith from mm-hmm. Portland, who has a desire to bring an NHL team to um, Salt Lake. Uh, he's he's dipped his toe in ownership of other bidding processes. Um, Kansas City, I think, is off the table, guys. I know you. I heard you talking about it. I think it's off the table because that building that is owned by Philip Anschutz's company mm-hmm. um, actually makes money without having a professional sports team in it of the of the big four of the big two the nba or the nhl Mm. i don't think they need it or want it right i I think that and there's there's no single owner sitting there saying i want to bring a team to kansas city uh i mean quebec city i I just you know it breaks my heart to say and i'm going to get hecked for it but quebec city's never going to get a team never it's the market's not big enough. Sure, the arena is spectacular. The fan base is there, but this is a time when corporate, I mean, corporate marketing, corporate partnerships, have to account for eighty, ninety million dollars, yeah. yeah. and that's just not going to be the case in Quebec City. And it can't be government money. You know, I know the Quebec government wants to get the team there, but it can't be government money. So take that off the table. And the other two big cities, Atlanta and Houston, I think for some reason, if if uh, if if somebody can't buy a team for those two places, they're saving them for expansion. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine if they went to Atlanta a third time and it didn't oh. work there? That would. That's not the. That's not the kind of hat trick you want. I'll be uh, I'll be uh, in the cabin at the lake by then, boys. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. I know you and I will enjoy the conference finals. So do that, okay? I will. By the way, say hello to Ed Jovanovsky when you talk to him for me. We, we will. Although, uh, as we, we let the cat out of the bag, we did record the interview. Yeah. Yeah, yes. But next time uh, he's on the show, I, 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 I'm, we'll I'm do well it. aware because, after all, yes. Yeah. <laughs> unlike, unlike Ed. Unlike Ed. <laughs> Thanks, John. Talk to you next Cheers. week. You bet. Yep.